Hi, Mr. Weiser here. Once again, thanks for watching. Uh, this is going to be covering another section of the EOC review for North Carolina Math 3 course. This is going to be EOC review number four. This is going to be broken up into three different videos, three parts. The first part is going to be roots, zeros, factors using synthetic division um, and the remainder theorem. And then the second part is going to be talking about long division and just simplifying, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And then finally, we're going to finish up with adding and subtracting rational expressions and also solving rational equations. Wherever possible, we'll utilize Desmos to help us uh, solve using technology, um, but I'll also show you hand techniques as well for all of these. So the this first video is going to get into roots and zeros. Here are this, uh, the objectives we're going to learn throughout this whole um, sequence of videos for this review. Let's look at that first uh, just kind of screen here. You might want to pause this and write down any relevant information that's going to be helpful for you. The one thing that I'm going to stress here is that you're going to need to, um, you're going to need to know how to do synthetic division, but you're also going to need to realize that you can get just remainders by plugging in the opposite of your divisor. So when, anytime you divide a number, as long as you have just an X and a plus a number or minus a number, then you're just going to switch that number, the sign. And in the, des in, the, in the synthetic division model, you're just going to put that sign right out here in a little box, list out all your coefficients, any terms that have a gap, like this, there's no X cubed here, you're going to put a zero, follow your coefficients, bring down the number. This is going to be times one times two is two, add down two times two is four, negative seven plus three is negative three, plus four is negative three, negative three times two is negative six. 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. That's your remainder. And so you write uh, 1x cubed. Always go one number lower in your exponent. So 1x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 3. And your remainder is negative 4. So you'll say plus, or you could also just do minus 4, um, but plus negative 4 over your divisor, which is still x minus 2. Remember, if you have a number you're dividing by, and the remainder is a zero, that, that that divisor is a factor. And the opposite of that number will be the zero. So if you have a factor of x plus 4, the zero is negative 4. If you have a factor of x minus 4, the zero is 4. Um, and if you have a double root, that's going to kiss the graph. So a double root will have a min or max at the x-axis. It might look like this, where it just touches it and then goes back in the other direction. So that's a double. All right, so I don't want to get too much into this. Let's get on to some of the examples. Uh, part one, number one, for the polynomial, f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 2. One of the roots is 2. What are the other two roots? You can do this by hand, or you can do this using technology. So I'm going to start with technology. First, you want to just graph it. Now, when I key that into Desmos, it's going to cross the x-axis three times. One of those times, you get a whole number, 2. That is one of your roots. The other numbers are going to be 0 0.268 and 3.732. 0 0.268 and 3.732. So we know that it cannot be answer choice B or D because these are decimals and these are integer numbers. And that's just not going to work out. So I can test the decimals for negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 and 2 plus or minus square root of 3. Let me do A first. You can't type a plus or minus symbol, so you just do one with a plus and one with a minus. And as you can see, I get 3.472 and negative 5.472, which is not going to be those two numbers here that are crossing at the decimal points. So it's going to have to be the other answer. And those do indeed match up with the decimal values that we have on our graph. So it's going to be C. Let me also show you how to do this by hand. Um, if you're just doing it on the graph, then um, so that's that's going to be from your graph. Then you can skip on to the next one. If you want to know how to do this by hand, uh, stick around. I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that root and we're going to use synthetic division. So I'm going to bring down the 1, multiply by 2, write that answer here, add down. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Multiply that negative 4 by 2 to get negative 8. 9 plus negative 8 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Add those together, you get a remainder of 0. From there, we're going to have the equation x 1x squared minus 4x plus 1 
and we're going to set that equal to zero. We'll have to use the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is the opposite of b, plus or minus, square root, b squared minus 4, ac, all over to a. And that's going to be what x is, provided that it's in this form, a, b, and c equals 0. So my a value is going to be 1, my b value is negative 4, and my c value is 1. So if I plug all those into the quadratic formula, I'm going to get the opposite of negative 4, which is positive 4 plus or minus b squared. So again, negative 4 in parentheses squared is positive 16 minus 4. a and c are both 1, so 1 and 1, all over 2 times a, which is 1. If I do a little math in there, 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 4 times 1 times 1 is 12, so I have 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4, which is um, 12 over 2. And I can actually reduce that. Um, 12 is actually, the square root of 12 can be rewritten as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So it's going to be 2 square root of 3. So that's going to equal 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 3, all divided by 2. I can simplify the 4 and the 2 to give me 2. 2s will cancel out here. So it's going to be square root of 3. So you didn't want to know that probably, but now you do. That's how you do it by hand. Grass will work just fine. Down to the next question. All right, here's the question. For the polynomial g of x equals x to the sixth power minus 2x cubed plus x, answer each of the following. How many real zeros does a polynomial have? A real zero crosses the x-axis. So if I graph it, where does it cross the x-axis? And how many times? Well, it crosses the x-axis at these numbers. And there's another one over here. There's actually four unique real zeros. One, two, three, four. So it has four real zeros. I don't care what they are. I just want to know how many there are. Letter B, how many total zeros does the polynomial have? Total just represents the degree. The degree will, give, will dictate how many zeros you would expect any polynomial to have, both real and complex. Now, you're not asked to find the complex zeros on this exam. But you do have to know how to how to find how many of them there are. So if you look at your degree, your degree is going to be six. So your total real zeros is going to be six. So it always matches whatever that highest exponent is. Degree is six. The answer is going to be six. Meaning that how many left over are there? How many zeros would be considered complex? Complex is going to be the total minus the real. So that's going to be 6 minus 4. Two of them you don't see on the graph. That's going to be how many complex there are. Again, we don't have to find them. We could, but I'm not going to make you do that right now. So on to the next question. The question is, which of the following polynomials has the following characteristics? Three distinct roots, negative 1, 0, and 3. And x equals negative three is a double, x equals three is a double root, meaning that it's gonna touch the graph. It might, at positive three, it might look like it's touching the graph from this direction, or it could look like it's touching the graph at three from this direction, but either case, a double root, meaning that it has to, has to kiss the graph and turn back around. So if I were to do this using the graph, I would throw them all in here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to rule out any of them that have um, zeros in, in the wrong spot. So uh, when I look at this graph, it says negative 1, 0, and 3. Negative 1, 0, and 3. That's good. This is negative 1, 0, and I don't see a 3 anywhere. So we can rule that one out. This is negative five point something, negative one. That's four zeros. That's no good. And this one has negative one, zero, and three. So it's between these two. Now, when I look over here, both of those give me those zeros, but only one of them gives me a double root, and that's this, this purple one here. So because of that point where it touches the graph and then turns back around, that has to be your answer since that gives you a double root at three. So negative 1, 0, and 3. 
going to be answer choice D. And that's how to use Desmos to get the answer. Now, if you're good with that, you can move on to the next question. If you'd like to see how to do that without using a graph, let me show you. First thing I want to do is I want to set up my factors. So my factors are always going to be opposites. So my factors are going to be x plus 1. x equals 0 is just going to be x, so times x. But then x minus 3 is going to be your other factor if 3 is your 0. Since the 3, 0 is a double root, I'm going to throw a square on the outside. So my I'm going to rewrite this with the x on the outside, x plus 1, and x minus 3 squared. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the x minus 3 squared to give me x squared, double the negative 3x, so minus 6x plus 9. And then I'm going to distribute the x into the x plus 1, so it's going to be x squared plus x. And then finally multiply those together, and that should give me answer choice D. Okay, so x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 6x is negative 6x cubed. x squared times 9 is 9x squared. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 6x is negative 6x squared. And then 9 times x is 9x. Let's simplify. So x to the fourth. These two are going to combine to negative 6 and positive 1, so minus 5x cubed. And then these two, negative 6 and 9, will combine to positive 3x squared plus 9x. So that does indeed match answer choice D. All right, let's move on to the next question. This question says, what is the remainder when uh, 3x to the fourth minus 2x plus 1 is divided by x plus 1? There are two ways to do this. Option one is to use synthetic division. You're going to realize that there's a couple missing terms. There's no x cubed term. There's no x squared term between those fourth terms and x terms. So you're going to have two zeros in there. You got to switch that sign of the plus one. So there's a lot of potential ways to, to mess this up. Um, but bring down the three. Three times negative one, negative three, add down. Negative three times negative one is positive three, add down. Three times negative one is negative three, add down. Negative five times negative one is five, add down. And you get 6. And remember, I just want my remainder. So my remainder is 6. Option 2 is to use remainder theorem. That's going to look like the substitution. That same number that you put in the box over here will get plugged in for your x's. Don't worry about your gaps. When you evaluate that using a calculator, you should get 6 as well. And you can see here, I plugged it into my TI-84. Uh, 3 parentheses negative 1 to the fourth power minus 2 parentheses negative 1 plus 1 also gives me 6. So the answer is 6, no matter how you do it. OK, pick the one that you want to write down for work, and let's go on to the next question. All right, for part one number five, the question says, for the polynomial x cubed minus 7x minus 6, which of the following is a factor? And you have two, uh, three ways to do this. Uh, the first two ways are just using um, either synthetic division or remainder theorem. And the goal is to get a remainder of zero. Now, the, the, the drawback of this method is that you're going to have to test it for all four. And what if your answer is the last one? My recommendation would be to graph and see what the zeros are. So I would just graph this and find the zeros. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and graph that in Desmos. All right, so our zeros are going to be negative 2, negative 1, and 3. Now, when I draw that out, you got to be aware that the factors are going to be the opposite of the zeros. So my factors are going to be x plus 2, 
x plus 1 and x minus 3. Let me show you on a graph that graphing these three factors together is going to produce the same graph as what you see from the original expression. And let me move that down here. You see how those two are the same graph. So now I can answer the question, which of the following is a factor? Well, the factor is going to be the graph that, or the expression that is, is one of your answer choices. And it looks like I have an x plus 2 over here. That is a factor because it's the opposite of the 0, negative 2. So that would be my recommended way of doing it. All right, let's finish it up with number 6. Question 6. Suppose p of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus 13x plus k. The remainder of the division of p of x by x plus 1 is negative 8. What is the remainder of the division by p of x by x minus 1? There's a lot to unpack here, but the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out what k is before I answer this question. So let's break this up into uh, two parts. Part 1 is answering that first question. You can figure out what k is by either doing synthetic division or using the remainder theorem, as you see here. Either one of those, if you if solve correctly, will give you a correct value of k. Let me show you both ways. All right, I have it set up with synthetic division and with remainder theorem by plugging in negative 1 and just leaving k as k. Um, either way, you get 8 for k if you solve it out. And you can follow my steps on the synthetic division, or you can do what I did here. And I can see that I, when I plug in negative 1, I get negative 16. And I get negative 16 plus k equals negative 8. And I add that 16 to both sides, I'm going to get positive 8. Now, that's not the answer to the question, but you need the value of k to be able to answer the question. So now what I can say is, what's the remainder of the division when I divide by x minus 1? So if I look at this x minus 1, and I do a new division, now that I know k is 8, I could use either method to get the value of the remainder by dividing by x plus, minus 1. And remember that that's going to be a positive 1 when I do that division. So let me go ahead and do synthetic division here. I'll just do a positive 1. And I'll plug in my same numbers, 1, negative 2, 13. But in this case here, now I have the value of 8. So I'll substitute that in for k and bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 13 minus 1 is 12. 12 times 1 is uh, 12. And then 8 plus 12 is 20. So my answer is 20, whether I use synthetic division or I simply do uh, the remainder theorem and do um, parentheses 1 to the third power minus 2 parentheses 1 squared plus 13 times 1. And then remember, I know what 8k is now, so I can say plus 8. And that's going to give me 20 as well if I plug that in. So my answer is 20. What is the remainder when I divide by x minus 1? When I plug in positive 1, knowing that k is 8, I get 20. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully that helps. The next video is going to be going over long division and multiplying and dividing of rational expressions. Have a good day.